Hi, I'm James Dunn. Welcome to the Inside Network. Welcome to InDepth, where joining me today to discuss the ever-changing investment environment of 2023 is Fiona Kerr, Investment Manager at Ruffer in London. Welcome, Fiona. Thank you for having me. A great pleasure to have you here. Let's go in depth. Do you see a soft landing for the US economy in 2023 and room for the long-awaited Fed pivot? Um, I have to say no. Um, I would almost go as far as to say that those two things feel mutually exclusive. I don't think that the Federal Reserve or other central banks across the world are in the habit of cutting interest rates because everything's okay. You know, history will tell us that Fed cuts come when things get bad, you know, something breaks. Um, and therefore, I think that it's unlikely that we'll see rates lower this year. Um, yeah, and I think markets have some adjustment to do to get there. Do you think we'll see a year like 2022 again in terms of the sheer pace of interest rate rises? I think um, the quantum of change is unlikely to be as big as it was last year when you think we came into 2022 interest rates in the US were zero um, and we ended the year with them well above 4%. I don't think that we'll get that magnitude of change again this year, but what we might get is a, an expectations shock because I think a lot of people are starting 2023 thinking that, that it's all over and we're going back to the way things were. Um, and I would challenge that assumption. I think that we're not yet comfortable at where the peak in rates will be, and it could be higher. What does Ruffa see as potentially the best performing asset class in 2023? Um, I think commodities are gonna play a really exciting role through 2023, um, and in particular, oil and copper are where we're looking at the moment. Um, when you think about the positive impulse uh, for nominal growth from China, reopening the economy and that pent up demand, um, when you pair that with a supply landscape that's not significantly increased, um, I think that's a pretty bullish outlook for our commodities. Touching wood, we're early in 2023, Fiona. How has your outlook changed over the last three years? From 2020, given all that we've experienced and the, the sheer disruption of the pandemic, how has your outlook changed, if at all, uh, when you look at the investment world? Yeah, I mean, well, rougher, has a, a very long-term outlook um, and we are often early in identifying risks. So I would say in the aftermath of COVID, our views haven't changed hugely. It's more that things that we've been concerned about for a long time in advance of COVID have come to pass. And um, so that's things like uh, higher and more uh, volatile inflation, higher interest rates um, and a positive correlation between equities and bonds. What about even the geopolitical situation, which is probably coming along after COVID? Things like the return of land war to Europe, not many people would have envisaged that that was possible. To what extent do these geopolitical uncertainties and, and the potential for black swans like that factor into the long-term view that Rafa has? Very much so, and I think that you know, that is a huge input into the long-term thesis we have around a more volatile and inflationary world. You know, geopolitics will absolutely feed into that. Um, and you know, we didn't predict a war. I don't really think anybody did. But the, the knock-on effects of that were you know, more inflation again. So we're kind of watching it very closely. It's part of our top-down themes that we try to play in the portfolio where we can. But most of all, I think it just makes us concerned about the risks that face markets. Do you spend a lot of time wargaming those kind of potential scenarios and imagining what if? Um, so at Ruffer, asking what if we are wrong is 50% of what we do. It's 50% of our efforts, so absolutely yes. But I think there's also has to be an acknowledgement of where you can have no edge. You know, if there's a situation where it's going to go one way or another and you, you can't know, um, we ideally like to remove our exposure to that as far as possible. Um, so it's about avoiding risks where you can't have um, an edge on the outcome. Everything I've read about Rafa and the people to whom I've spoken who are from Rafa, I find it fascinating. If you step back and look at the house style, how much is art and how much is science? It's a really good question and I would, I would lean on the side of, of art. Um, it's a balance. 
but we're definitely a qualitatively led uh, institution and one where judgment and ability to think creatively um, is is valued and another you know to to draw a comparison with kind of other strategies and, and with the way the world is going in terms of everything needs to be quantified and we want to have you know, the number and the metric to hand, um, it's important to be able to think outside the box because the future is not necessarily going to look like the past and being able to consider what if equities and bonds were no longer negatively correlated, for example, there's huge value in being able to do that. I asked you before what will be the best performing asset class of 2023, but on the flip side, What's the asset class that gives Ruffa most concern this year, even to the point of avoiding it? Um, that's easy. I would say it's corporate credit for us. So that's something that we do not hold in the portfolio at all uh, and even go so far as to hold uh, credit default swaps. So we're positioned to actively benefit from any distress in the corporate credit market. And there's kind of two reasons for that. I think one is pricing. You know, with reflecting a risk-free rate of nearing 5%. We just don't think you're getting the yield um, to compensate you for taking the risk of lending to corporates. And then secondly, there's a liquidity element as well. There's so many products available to investors these days offering daily liquidity um, with access to you know, corporate bonds. Um, and the reality is that the underlying assets are not that liquid, and that makes us really concerned. What's your view on duration? Do you lean to the short side? We're not currently short duration, no, um, but definitely cautious. Uh, I think given you know, what we've talked about around potential for higher interest rates and higher volatility, um, that's not an environment in which you're going to get capital returns on, on bonds, as we've seen you know, for the last three decades. So cautious in that regard. What they do offer now, of course, is a yield, which they didn't used to, um, and the potential for upside if we do, say, um, dip into a recession. So we marginally prefer to take risk via duration here if, if the choice was between duration and equities. Is it easier with higher interest rates in the sense that cash, at long last, is not just a tactical place to sit and view the world, but you actually earn a return from it? Yeah, I mean, it's something we've been thinking long and hard about. You know, at what point or at what level of interest rates do people make exactly that observation and think, maybe I want to take less risk and I'll just sit in cash? I mean, the obvious thing to say is that um, inflation is still above the level of interest rates, so it's a negative real return. But I would absolutely agree with you that um, it's increasingly attractive and we are starting to see people being happy to sit on the sidelines. What about equities? The firm's been at its lowest ever waiting there for quite some time now, but are you seeing any great temptation to lift that? Um, not, not really. We have added a little from the lows we met through last year um, in reflection of some of the changes to the outlook from you know, China reopening, etc. But with equities, they're really priced for perfection. They're priced for that soft landing and they're priced for interest rates peaking soon and, and hopefully coming down. Um, and the reality is that that is under threat because the economy has proven so resilient to the higher interest rates that we've had so far. Um, so you, you're either facing uh, downgrades in corporate profits or higher rates for longer and multiples contracting. So it feels a lot of risks to the downside. Fiona, thank you very much for going in depth with me. Thank you.